material lecture material for this week which has to do with the conditions for regression so um, i use this acronym for the four conditions for regression which is the l i n e conditions because that acronym spells line um, the textbook has slightly different conditions which are actually the same um, but they are specified as more pieces so I'm just going to write out um, the conditions that the textbook talks about, um, and then we'll talk about uh, what mine mean and how they connect. So um, the textbook has linearity, zero mean, uh, uniform spread, independence, normality, and randomness. And so those bunch of conditions are actually all contained in my four conditions, but I think that mine are easier to remember. Um, so linearity, that's the first condition. It needs to look like a line. So it should look like a straight line. And so one of the ways that something could be violated is if it actually looks like a bendy line. There's also a condition of independence. Um, and so I take this to mean that observations must be independent of one another. And also residuals must be independent. Then normality, this is uh, residuals should be normally distributed. And equality of variance means that the residuals should have equal variance um, regardless of fitted value. So let's see how the conditions from the book connect. So the linearity condition obviously is linearity. Zero mean um, means that the residuals need to be be uh, centered at zero, and that is baked into this normality condition. For my conditions, it needs to be normal with zero sigma, so it's gonna be centered around zero. So that's where the zero mean fits in, it's in my normality. Uniform spread, that means equality of variance. Independence is obviously independence. Normality is obviously normality. And then randomness, I sort of think that this fits into my independence in that your um, observations need to be independent. They have to be kind of random. Um, and also when you're thinking about randomness for your variance, you want it to look random and not like it has some kind of pattern. So these conditions are really important if we're going to do uh, regression and not um, make mistakes. Uh, if you don't have the conditions met, you can make all kinds of inferential mistakes. Your coefficients can be the wrong sign. Um, many things can go wrong. Um, and so you need to check your conditions every time you are fitting a linear regression model. So this is part of the assess part of choose, fit, assess, use. And for the most part, you check the conditions by looking at plots. So I'm going to show you some residual plots, and we're going to talk about what makes a good residual plot and what shows a violation of the condition. So I'm going to start with a good example. So this is simulated data, and I'm just showing you the y variable versus the x variable, and that blue line is the line of best fit. So this is just the scatter plot. And then the first plot that I want to show you is the residual versus fitted plot. Um, we will do the R code, I think, in the next lab for next week, um, but I've put it here in case you want it. You can plot uh, a model object, and this will be uh, just sort of default plot. So you don't have to use ggplot to make it. It will just give you um, the model plot of the residual versus the fitted values. And so what this means, what the fitted values are, are the predictions. So if um, I predicted 10, uh, then I would have some values where they had uh, negative residuals, some values that had positive residuals. If the fitted value was 12, again, the same kind of thing is going on. Um, and so when I look at the residual versus fitted plot, um, one of the things that I'm looking for is that this band of residuals is the same width the whole way across. Um, and it looks really nice here. So, so that looks good on this residual versus fitted plot. 
Um, another plot that we might use to assess a model is a QQ plot. So this is the quantile quantile plot. That's what the Qs stand for. And it basically says if we had a theoretical normal distribution, how would that look against um, the real data that we had uh, for our residuals? Um, and so these are basically standard deviations. So it's centered at zero. Um, and then we'd go out, you know, one standard deviation, two standard deviations, three standard deviations, four standard deviations. Um, and we're just breaking the standardized residuals into quantiles. Um, and so what you want to see on a QQ plot is a nice straight line. You don't want to see anything pulling away from the line. So this dotted line is giving you a little guidance to look at. And you want to see all of these circles falling really close to the line. So this looks good. This is um, uh, conforming to the conditions. Um, and this is a way to check normality. There's another way to check normality, which is to look at a histogram of the residuals. So this is using uh, GDPlot to make a histogram of the residuals. Um, again, you could check normality. I'm not very good at assessing whether something looks normal from a histogram. I am pretty good at assessing whether something looks good from a QQ plot, but that's mostly because I've looked at a lot of QQ plots. So this is also for normality. So that was a good example. Um, I've also now simulated some data that violates each of the conditions in turn. So the first one is a linearity violation. And so I can see this um, of the L, I, N, E conditions. I can see right away in my scatter plot that linearity is not met. And that's because um, the better fit line would be a curved line. Um, and so linearity is not upheld. So I sh really shouldn't be doing a linear regression model because it's going to be a bad model. Um, so I've violated linearity here, uh, which I can see from the scatter plot. But interestingly, even if you have simulated data to try and just violate one of the conditions like I did, you often see that the other conditions are going bad as well. So let's look at our residual versus fitted plot. So first of all, uh, you can see the lack of linearity here again. So L, I, N, E. I can see that linearity is not met because this uh, red line is not nice and flat along the dotted line. So it should be flat like this. It is not flat. And so it looks like a violation of that. Um, I also think that maybe the equality of variance. I mean, the width of the band is the same all the way along, um, but it definitely is, there's something happening with the variance. So maybe that E condition is also violated. That's sort of a, a question mark. If I look at the QQ plot here, uh, this is starting to look a little bit bad because the data down here is pulling away from the dotted line. Um, it's not awful. Uh, so this would be, if we were thinking about the L, I, N, E, we would be thinking about the normality. Um, I don't know if that one is really violated. It doesn't look super great. Um, and I could look at the histogram of residuals as well. Uh, so again, like, does this look normal? Uh, I don't know, maybe not. It looks like maybe a little bit skewed. Maybe that's easier to tell in the histogram, but it's, it's still a little questionable. Um, then the problem with independence is that uh, there's no plots to help you. So I, I generated some data to violate the linearity condition, but I can't generate data to violate the independence condition, or I could, but you wouldn't be able to see it in a plot. Um, so this I call the thinking condition, because you have to think about your data. Um, and so you want rows in your data set to be independent from one another. So some common violations. Um, if your rows in your data set were years or months or days or hours, right? Anything that has to do with dates or times, that would be a violation uh, because what's going on uh, this year is probably going to be similar to what's going on next year. So those rows in the data set aren't necessarily going to be independent from one another. 
Another thing that is not independent is geographic units. So if you have states or counties or zip codes or cities, that's going to be a violation because again um, something that's going on in this city is probably going to be related to the thing that's going on in the city next door so they're not going to be completely independent um, another thing would be like if you're doing a survey and you ask friends so if you go up to a group of people and you say i want to ask you who you're voting for for president you ask one person and then they get to hear the answer of their friend before they answer that might not be independent um, you really want to sort of take a random sample of people um, so those are maybe the most common violations um, uh, the condition being upheld the gold standard would be a randomized controlled trial because then the researchers will have made sure that all of the subjects or the rows in the data, the observations are independent from one another. So we can't use plots here. So we had linearity, independence. The next one is normality. So I have generated some data um, which violates the independence or the normality condition. Um, and you can already kind of see what's going on here on the scatter plot you can sort of see that something is weird, um, but if I'm thinking about the L, I, and E, it looks okay for linearity. I, I feel good about that. Um, but let's look at the next plot. So if I look at the residual versus fitted plot, and I'm thinking about L, I, and E, again, um, the linearity is looking good because that red line is nice and flat. Uh, the other condition that we're often looking for on the residual versus fitted plot is the equality of variance. We want this band of residuals to be the same width the whole way along. That looks good. Um, so, but I can kind of, again, see that something is looking a little weird. So let's look at the QQ plot. Again, I generated this data to violate uh, normality. So we're thinking about the N piece of it. And this looks really bad. So this is sort of forming an S shape. Um, so uh, violations, an S shape or a C shape, anytime the data pulls away from that line. Uh, so in this case, I'm seeing it pull away here, and then it looks like it's pulling away there. So that's a violation of the normality um, assumption or condition. Um, and you're going to be able to see that as well in this histogram, I think. So you can see this is like very skewed. People who are really good at reading QQ plots will be able to look at this QQ plot and say whether it's left skewed or right skewed. I always have to think about it for a really long time, um, but uh, I can usually figure out in terms of the theoretical quantiles what we would expect if it's above or below. Um, so that's, that's what's going on here. So that's the normality violation. L-I-N-E, the last one is the equality of variance violation. So L-I-N-E. Um, so if we're thinking about linearity with the scatter plot, it looks like there's there's nothing non-linear about this. It, it wouldn't fit the data better to have a curve going up or a curve going down. There's no, you know, it's not like some, um, you know, some other type of line. So the, the L is looking okay. Um, again, I is the thinking condition, so we can't use a plot. Uh, now, if we look at this residual versus fitted plot, this is really where I can see the violation of that equality of variance condition. And it's because of this big fan shape of the uh, residuals. So for low fitted values, we have a very narrow uh, band, so the variance is small, and then it gets progressively larger and larger and larger as we move uh, toward larger fitted values. So that is a big violation of the equality of variance. So fan-shaped residuals. That's the biggest clue for um, a violation of this condition. But again, I was just trying to violate that equality of variance, but you can also see that I am violating the normality condition here. So again, this is looking um, like it's pulling away from the line above. 
and below, um, the normality is looking bad. And again, if I go look at the histogram, it's really spiky. Um, it's, it's too concentrated right around the mean. So I can see here as well that the normality condition was violated. So those are the conditions of linear regression. 